Welcome, everyone, to episode 439 of Just Joshing. I am your host, Joshua Pentelaresco. I write stuff in podcasts, too. And today, Patty Shales Lefkos joins the podcast. Patty was awesome. Just nothing short of awesome. I uh, had a great conversation with her about well, everything, really. And um, she's one of those people that you, you have to admire because she just went on and lived a wonderful life and is still doing amazing things even to this day. And I will have to say, I barely scratched the surface of what she's capable of. And that will have to be saved for another conversation. But the exciting thing is, I hope there will be another conversation. So, I really feel like I, I've said all the important stuff already. Let's just get to that conversation with Patty right now, shall we? This episode of Just Joshing is sponsored by Indie Imprint. Indie Imprint supports creators by creators. Whether you are writing a book or creating a video game, Indie Imprint works with its clients to produce, edit, and present their projects to the world. For more information, check out their website at www.indieimprint.com. So, I, I, I'm going to start by going behind the curtain, ladies and gentlemen. So, Patty, I always ask every guest I have to say something funny at the very beginning, like when I do my test runs, because for me, there's two reasons. Number one, it always amuses the hell out of me, whatever the answer is going to be. Because it doesn't matter. My favorite answer still is to date something funny. Like, that's just like, like yes! Right? But um, the other part is it's a good icebreaker. Because, I, like, I don't know why, but people get nervous talking to me. So it's just like, okay, let's just break the ice. Let's just, you know, get as outrageous as we possibly can off the air so that you're in a good mood and then we can get really get rolling. So does that make sense? Sure. You go. <laughs> You'll go with that. So my other favorite question I always start with. Sorry. Yeah. So my other favorite question I always start with. We we keep talking. <laughs> um, my other favorite question is, if you have anything incriminating you'd like to say, make it good. She's got this like grin on her face, ladies and gentlemen. No one's ever gonna see if he's like, I can tell she's got stories. Like lots and lots of stories. Just by that response. Yes, I do. But uh, sadly but luckily, my best girlfriend and shared all the stories along. Oh. She took them all to see and her about a while to think. Ah. ah. So you have, so you have a clean slate then. You are totally innocent-ish. We'll just, we'll just say innocent-ish. Is that is that is that honest? I, I think that's an honest answer, or as honest as we're gonna get anyway. Yeah, but how are you tonight? Really good. Well, gardening's over. Gar- gar- gardening's over for the year. I just that that just seems like you, you're done, and that's totally fine. You know, I, I mean, I, that is the one thing. I, I'm not gonna lie. The one thing I really don't miss about living out west, about especially in the mountains. I lived now. I lived in Calgary. I didn't miss the sudden snowfalls out of nowhere. I, I I don't miss them very much. I mean, I I know that's part of life, but it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm in Ontario. Yeah, we're gonna get snow in about like. Um, Probably in the next two or three weeks, we'll, we'll probably get snow here. It's usually when we start getting it. But, uh, yeah. You know, it's one, kind of one of those deals where it's like, I don't miss the minus 40 weather. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I feel sorry for your... T- well, but Calgary gets really cold here. It's like today, minus two. And yesterday, minus three. So, we'll go on skiing. I'll go on skiing until it's about minus 20, and then I don't have Oh, I, I actually the, the one the one thing I like I once upon a time I skied, once upon a time, 
the biggest thing I remember that like my, for me I always remember that it's like the best boots for winter time are actually those ski boots. Those ski boots are nice and snug and warm, and that goes a long way. And, and honestly, honestly, if you're properly suited up, or you're like me, been in Alberta for ten years, so the cold doesn't bother you quite to the same degree anymore. You're like you, you can handle pretty much any, anything. Like you just get used to. It. I mean, the only the only place colder than I was was Winnipeg, and that's like. Yeah. That's what that, that 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 that's yeah no nobody likes that winter like I don't know what you, um, you're kind of in the snow belt, right? I'm actually just out of it I'm just wow. out of it I'm in Windsor so so two hours from me is London Ontario so London Ontario is just in in it like, it's kind of like the borderline the moment you get to London you're in the belt. And you're in the belt, I think, till you get to about, um, I think, right around Toronto area, and then you're out of the bat that that particular belt, right? There are other, there's other stuff when you go east of that, but that snow belt you're talking about is like that two hour gap. I'm in Windsor. We do get cold. We do get, um, we do get it, but it's not like, like the weirdest thing for me that's coming back here actually has been the humidity. Getting used to that again because I haven't lived in it in like ten years. And it was like, oh, this is what that felt like. <laughs> I'm not used to this anymore. <laughs> right? And, uh... We were up in Toronto at uh, Jay and Lawrence and Weston. Okay. Where I saw the light and, and uh, every summer, except for this summer, we usually go back to our island cottage north of Kingston. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, it's... I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. Sounds like, sounds like a good life, actually. Sounds like sounds like a good life. You've had... like I, I was looking you up. In one sense, I'm doing... In my own way, I'm doing kind of what you're doing, what you did. And that is, I took a leap in faith and I said, you know what? I'm going to live a creative life. I don't care when. I don't care how. I'm going to make, take my creativity... And I'm going to earn a living with it. And I'm going to be very happy doing the things I love to do for the rest of my life because I'm too old for anything else. You did that. Uh, yeah, but I did it with a nice pension, you know. I did it really late with a nice pension. Yeah. So I started as a teacher and then a principal. And then I retired. And as you probably noticed, and then I went to journalism. Yeah. And then I got to write one. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I also just think that it's a it's a different circumstance. I'm not sure I'm going to have a pension when I retire. Like, I, just with the way the world is going. My grandmother retired in the 90s in, in, in the United States, and I literally watched them take her pension from her when the company changed names, right? Well, yeah, I saw that, I saw that, like, very early on in my life. And I saw that, you know, like, my dad, my dad's his own, he's an entrepreneur, his own business kind of guy. He just created, he's created his own future. He's got it to the point now where he makes a comfortable living doing what he does. So... But again, he's not relying on uh, his pension is minuscule. So I'm looking at the fact that I think realistically for most of us today, um, the reality of the situation is I don't know that a good pension awaits people anymore. So I think there's a more onus on us today to create our futures because we otherwise um, we won't have it. I, it it's something I, I'm very cognizant of. It's just the fact that Okay, I could. I left. I worked in the warehouse for ten years. I made a pretty good. I made actually a pretty good like wage doing it. But I also looked at the fact that sooner or later my body's going to break down. Sooner or later I'm going to get an injury and I'm not going to be able to do what I did. Right? So I'm looking at the fact that sooner or later like my body is going to get used up. And 
it's great. Like it was a great job, but I'm also looking at the fact that, like, do I want my body to break down for a place that no matter how good the company is, is never going to give you that level of appreciation that you have that you're supposed to have for yourself, right? And that's kind of like the I, I think I think the the biggest change is your era your era got like it was more it was more of the norm to get a job stick with it work your time retire live the life now it's like we're making we're we're on course to make less and unless we seize control of our destiny that is going to be our fate and that's something that. Uh, I, Oh, yeah. Whereas, as you say, my era, you got into a career and you generally kept at it. And I loved it. I loved it. Oh, sure. Uh, I, 10 years old, I said I was going to be a writer, so I just waited and did that after. But you still have a day job, don't you? Not currently. I, I'm gambling. This, year's, this year, I thought, let's gamble. Let's gamble. There's no, there's nothing to, there's nothing to lose. If I get my ass kicked, if I get my ass kicked, guess what? I go back to school. Maybe I go take a trade. Maybe I do something else next year. I tried, right? I tried. I know. Um, in six months, I've. Have, have you given yourself a year? One year. Two years. One one year to so, in I've been doing this for practically six months, almost six months. I have made three thousand dollars as a freelancer in six months. Right? That doesn't sound like an awful lot, but from what I've been told, I've done very well considering my start. Right? So. If you're just, if that's your first start. Yeah. Then that's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so. It's a mindset. Like, like honestly, it's a mindset. Like, the, the the thing is, so I had a interesting conversation with a consultation firm on Friday, and I was doing a, I, I did my first audiobook for a client. I actually made an audiobook for a client, and it was it, it was fun. I, I like seriously. I, I read someone and perform someone's stories for money. That's not a terrible deal all the way around. But I he looked at my stuff. He goes seriously. Focus down. And the moment I did that, like honestly. I currently have an opportunity to work with a publisher. I'm sending them some samples. Susan's been trying it with you. I'm sending some samples. Um, I, I, I chased a dream down this weekend. I sent a, a, a comic book website I've always wanted to write for. Um, I've always wanted just to write. Just say I did it. I want, or I just say I did it. I got an opening to try. So I, I did that. I have an article for Anime Herald I'm still working on. So I'm doing different things that way. I've released two books. So I have now permanent royalties coming from Amazon. Hopefully, have a third book out. I did some. I've done some stuff for some other publishers here and there. All of which to say, and and obviously I got my podcast. So all of which to say is I'm just creating as many waves as I can right now. And I, I got I, I got to be real, like right. I got to be real. March next year, if I'm not making at the very least four figures a month doing this. I have to read. I have to go back to the drawing board for a little while. Nothing wrong with that. I have a res. Like I said, I can get. I've turned down. Like again, everybody's like it's economic hard times. I've turned down three warehouse jobs. They've come to me to ask to work at the warehouse, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it right now. But next year, I go. You know what? I'll go back to that if, if, um, you know, I need to rebuild my financial equity if I want to get myself set up to go to college. I mean, I'll suck. I'll suck. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, that's the thing. I would go like right, right now. Uh, like I'm finding a weekend. I want. I would do a weekend job right now. Like honestly, just, just, just a weekend. Get out of the house, right? I would do that. I can't find that here. I cannot find a weekend job that would let me do that. It's like, come on, really? Yeah, it's, it's a. Steep, but 
doable. Steepa doable. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, you're obviously probably going to want it for Audible. So I, I would suggest, like, I did it in Audacity. And the biggest mistake I made on the first book was not studying the presets required to do the maximum effect. I recorded it first and then kind of had to re-engineer everything to fit the specs and standards. Okay, right? Now, part of that is on me because I've done so many podcasts that I just figured I could just record and edit it however I needed to edit it, right? Looking back, I would have saved myself a lot of time if I had just done the presets, done some practice. Like, like, I came up with a, my method of recording an audiobook. I actually picked up really quick. It's actually, for me, it was really simple. I broke every page down to its own file. And I just recorded it page by page by page. And then I would just compress it all. I just I would compile it and then I would put it all together as a as a chapter. You are looking just to put this okay, so we're gonna do some math. How big is your book? Like how many words? No, how many words? Not pages, words. What's your word count? What? How much? Ninety? Seventy nine thousand? Okay, so what you want to do, the average hour of a book, an audio book, is about 9,300 words, give or take, give or take, okay? Take your number, take your number, divide it by that number I just gave you, 9,300. That's how many recorded hours it's going to take. Multiply by four or five. That's how many hours you're going to put into it, okay? Probably. That, that, that's, how, that's how many hours you're going to put into it. Uh, multiply it by, considering you're going to be just learning, add another extra hour per finished hour. So I did my first, so I probably put about 50, 60 hours into this book. I probably, no, if I were to do it again, it would be closer to 50 than 60, right? Or maybe even closer to 40 because I know what I, I know a lot better what I'm doing. But, yeah, the first book, like, that was the learning curve. Like, always assume you're going to make mistakes the first time. Always assume that, um, uh, always assume that there's going to be things that just don't, um, that don't work out. And, like, like I said, if you got that kind of time, go for it, right? That's like, that's what I said. If you got that kind of time, if you're really comfortable with the idea of just doing it yourself, you're going to do some retakes, there's this one line in, in in that book. Yeah, there's this one line in, in his book I did like eight times. It's like every time I went to go to do that line, it's like, fuck. Like every time. It's just like, but I'm just like, son of a, oh my gosh. Go back, do the shot, and do the sentence before, perfect. Sentence after, perfect. That one, bleh, oh my god. No, okay. Again, finally I just said, you know what? Screw it. ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum Right. Making this, making this really well, and it, it, it's it's it, 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 it's more than. I, well, no, it, it it is. It's more. It's it's a time consuming. It's not hard in the sense that you can. Um, it's not hard, and it, like the the mechanics of it are aren't that difficult. You record your voice. You you figure out your presets. You you, you record it. You do some editing, right? You look at the look at the specs required, and you can and putting that all together it actually is not that difficult. But it's a it is a it is a process. There's a lot of time you're going to be putting into this. Um, don't like like when you look at a narrator's charge, like how much they generally charge. It looks like a lot of money, but when you sit there and do the math in terms of the hours put in, the research, and and right. It's actually a fair deal, more often than not, because you're asking me, like, okay, so your book would be, for me, approximately 30 to 40 hours of my time, okay? 30 to 40 hours of my time, probably closer to 40. So if I'm charging you, let's say 79000 that's about that's approximately nine finished hours. So if I charge you 1800 bucks, just, just, just to give you an idea, you're looking at 36 to 45 hours of work, right? That 36 to 45 hours of work for 1800 bucks is not actually that unreasonable, 
right? When you sit there and think about the actual work and creation and, right, that's literally like, that's what an audiobook is. Like when you hire somebody and depending on what you want, and I'm not, and by the way, all this is just the basics. If you want sound effects and things of that nature, you're adding more, right, right? You're adding more to it, right? So that's the thing, right? It, it's, it's a time process. It is putting the time and effort and energy into it. But if you have, you know, there's some authors that do amazing jobs in their own books. Honest to God, it's like they do incredible, they do incredible jobs. Because the one thing that you do have going for you is it's your story. Right, it's your story. So no one. No, no one would. You know, it's it, 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 you, I have I have two. I use a Sony mic for my basic recording, but I also have a Zoom mic to do some more advanced stuff. Um, I use the Zoom mic, like, like the next time around, like for me, my setup is going to be Audacity, the standard, the set, the, the, I go into the limiter settings, figure out the, um, and, and I know the specs going forward, like what the specs are. I would set my voiceover me recordings to a specific tone. I'd record and it would be one page at a time. And it's basically Audacity and a microphone. You can do it with a $30 mic. Right, especially right, you could do it. It's all in how you set up your file. The setup is far more important than the microphone. Although the mic, I'm not saying the microphone isn't important, but you can get away with a lot with less if you know what you're doing in terms of um, your presets. You can get away with a lot. So. I do have a friend who's done uh, a series of uh, cozy. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, yeah, it, it, I mean, it's another way of telling your story, right? Like, ultimately, so the business of writing, like the actual business of writing, if you sit there and look at what a traditional publisher actually does with your story, it's not that they sell it one time. They sell it many times. They sell it as a book. They sell it as an audio book. They sell it as an e-book. They sell it as a... If you have friends, like friend, it's, it's game tie-in. You sell it as a movie tie-in, a television series. You've sold, right? How many times is that a sale? That's one sale, two sale. Now I'm not even talking about international rights and foreign language rights and translations and all that stuff. You're looking at, I'm selling it one time, two times, three times, four times, five times. Like that's most authors don't look at the fact that it's not just about selling to your customers. It's also about selling it to as many different ways as possible to as many different customers as you can reach. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, well, I'm self-published, so I do my own marketing, and it seems to be going really well. You know, you just keep working on it, keep plugging. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, it's one of those situations where. Um, it's one of those situations where you have to understand the business of what you're getting into. And actually, I think the thing that shocks me most of authors is how much my, like a lot, a lot of authors don't get sales. They don't get the idea of what sales is. And the simplest way to, to actually describe it to them is like, seriously, all you're really doing is telling a story. Your job, your job is to your, your job is essentially this. You don't have, the big advantage an illustrator and a musician has over you is simply put, I can experience their product and that will advertise for me what they're all about. They can, they can skip some, their challenge is to get the distribution in a way where people can hear that, hear or see them. That's the illustrator. What we have to do is we have to talk people into committing their time to invest in us. Absolutely, absolutely, and that takes some trial and error for sure.
You, ah, so this was kind of um, so this was your learning curve book then. It was, yeah. Oh, big time. I was even afraid to put it out there. I had to have, because the whole thing done, it was about, I don't know, 10 drawings and everything. And I said, well, I'm going to have to do this in the book. I mean, the whole thing done, it was about, I don't know, two drafts and messing around and articles made it and part of it and everything. And then I gave it to an editor in Reed to say, you know, is this any good, or should I just like throw it in the garbage? No, no, it's highly publishable. Oh, okay, I guess I'll go ahead with it. <laughs> you, need, you, you, need, you needed that permission. Back, yeah. I had read, um, had published various, you know, magazines and some in the globe and in the place. Well, uh, San Francisco Chronicle, lots of places. Those were articles. I never that's interesting that's interesting to me because i mean it's it's gratifying in one sense that someone that has been as well uh publishes you still gets nervous oh absolutely yeah yeah it's, it's totally different i kind of thought you know when i first got out of journalism school i thought okay i just want to get some articles published and then i did that and then i wanted to get articles published in bigger magazines or, or national or whatever, whatever. And then I thought, okay, I want to get, I want to improve my rating. And so I did a thing with the UBC called Moving Ground. Okay. Where somebody, you pay, you know, for somebody to move you once a month kind of thing. And okay. then it, and it's more at the, uh, it's a higher level, more literary level, I guess. Okay. And it's not like magazines, it's a more literary story. That's when I started writing these stories about Paul and my, my solo trip. So then I thought, maybe that's the point where I can really do it. Uh, before that, I, you know, it just kind of developed and developed more. And I have a lot more confidence in the next book in the future. Ah, so for you, it's been... So I guess I'm going to ask this question. This is going to be a t this is going to be an evil question, and I'm sorry. This is going to be such an evil question. So what did you? You sounded like you needed permission, like but but uh, uh, and I mean, what I mean by that is you needed that affirmation that this is go this is good that this is that this is going to be. Why? Why? Yeah, because because you've done. Foster syndrome, you know. Um, if I put it out there and nobody buys it or nobody likes it, or I put money into publishing it and I waste my money, or, you know. I don't know. Okay, no, no, no. I, I'm so I'm curious. I I have a theory. Do you want to hear my theory? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's try. Let's try a theory. See, I I truly think, although we do fear failure, we do fear it. Um. I do think actually it's success that scares us far more than failure. Oh yeah. Yeah right. It's success that's good because the thing is, okay, like like I said earlier, if I get knocked on my butt by March next year, I haven't made the money. I haven't like things haven't fallen into place the way that I'm hoping for. Okay, what have I actually done? I've spent a year chasing my goal and I have landed on my butt. I've landed on my butt before, right? I mean. I've fallen off the bicycle, I slipped on roller skates, I, I've tried to kiss that girl and it got really awkward that first time, right? We all have those moments of failure in our lives. And we and, and it's a constant, like, like, it's just the way the world works. We, we fail more than we succeed. But because of that, because of that, because our batting averages are... Even if you're a 400 batting average in baseball, like baseball, 400 is a batting average. What that actually means, out of 100 balls thrown your way, you miss 60 of them, right? You hit 40, but you miss 60. Well, that's pretty damn good if you I mean, that's good for baseball, right? But you still miss 60 times. So. You have a, that's a very positive attitude. Yeah. Ah, okay. Even articles, you know, 
I've never had issues pitching. Like that, honestly, like here's the thing. Like I've never had that. So for me, this is this was my crash course in sales. I'll tell you where, where it was. Phoenix, Arizona. First Fridays. Okay, so you know they are nothing like here. First Fridays in Phoenix, there are city blocks that are just donated to artists coming out peddling, like peddling their. Hey, I'm awesome. So it it occurred to me after the second time I went. So it was, it was the third no third time I went. To my left, there was, I'm not kidding you, some of the most beautiful stained glass windows I've ever seen in my life. To my right was a rock concert. Okay? So, I got my book in the middle of this. And I'm looking to my left, and I'm looking to my right, it's like, I don't belong here. <laughs> right? So, I'm like, because, I, right, I don't belong. But, I learned how to talk doing that first Friday deal because I would meet people I would talk to people I would let people know like this is my field this is how I go because I, I may not be as outwardly talented as the dude with the stained glass windows and I may not be able to sing you will pay me to stop singing like you'll give me five dollars to never sing again right <laughs> right so but what I can do is like and I can talk your ear off and I find that it's it doesn't matter if it's an editor it's a write another writer if it's another person we all just want to talk and connect, and if you can do that, they'll take your pictures. Even if you suck, right? They will take your pictures because um, they have a sense of who you are. And it's not so much. This is going to sound counterintuitive. It's not so much the quality of your work that does matter, but what matters more is the quality of the person. They don't necessarily care right away how good of a writer you are. What they care about is can they work with you? Are you coachable? Are you able to are you able to stand ground on what you're doing? Because they're more interested in this. Like it's not really are you reliable and are you gonna yeah. yeah, they don't care like 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 I right, right. They don't care necessarily about they don't care necessarily how good you are. Although, again, there is a point. There is a point where it goes the other way. It's like, okay, you're not ready for this. And that's totally fine. Right? But the real thing I think most writers should understand, right? They don't care how good you are per se. Unless, right, they care more about how good of a person, how reliable of a person you are. Because if you deliver as a person, your writing will catch up. Right, your writing will eventually catch up, and if you listen and are willing to take constructive criticism. Oh yeah, totally. You know, and and uh, realize that maybe your idea on something wasn't the only idea. Oh, and, and don't get me wrong. Like, 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 a good editor will let you let you state your if you believe in something. A good editor will listen to you. It may still not fit what they're going for, but here's the thing. If you're passionate about something, there's a reason for it. And it does not serve their interest to have you unpassionate about your work. What right? they don't want, that doesn't serve them or you. So they may have a specific purpose. Like that's, that's totally fine. That's totally fair. But like what you're looking for, what you're honestly looking for is um, you're looking for that ability to like, okay, can he work with me? Can he do something with me? Can he is is he willing to listen? Is he willing to stand up for himself too? Because you don't want just a slug. You don't want that, right? Right? You don't want that. He always stand up to me. So when he believes in something, will he deliver when he says he's going to deliver? Right, right, right. Because that's more important than how good you are. There's lots of people that are talented, and but talent only will get you to a certain point. The reality is. The re There's a lot of people who are talented but don't finish. Well, you're you're a teacher, right? So once upon a time, you were a teacher. Once upon a time, you would have hated me because I was a flake. Once upon a time, I was a complete. No, no, no. Actually, I think your kind of guys kind of very most interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well yeah. no, but but. Yeah, well, I le hey, listen, I'm good at this entertaining. I'm great. At, I'm great. Like I said, I'm good at the, I'm good at the talking, right? So, why would I have, why would I have not liked you? because because I wasn't reliable. 
because I, I, in my younger days, I was not a very reliable person. I had to teach myself to discipline myself. You would have said to me a lot as a you would have cared. I, I like most teachers I've had, with two exceptions, two exceptions, they gave a shit. I was very fortunate with the majority of the criterium um, that I dealt with. They gave a shit. They tried. They 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 wanted their students to succeed. So you would have come up to me and said this, what my Spanish teacher said to me. Things come too easy for you. The problem with that is when you actually have to work at something, you might fall flat on your face because you just don't know how to work or something. And you have to teach yourself that, right? And that's great. Right? And that's a, and, and he wasn't saying, he, he said that from a great place. Like he cared, he gave a shit, right? It took me another ten years before that really sunk in, though. Right, 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 and and. Well, like when when you found something that was important to you that you were passionate about, then you were willing to put in the work, easier or not. Well, 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 that also. I mean, I've seen the bottom. Like, like for me, I got I've had my ass kicked, and and, and like thoroughly had my ass kicked, and it's like once you go through that nothing scares you anymore like that's the thing like like it, it's like the weirdest thing for me about this particular time in history i have no fear like in one very real sense nothing this is gonna sound odd like nothing's really changed in this one sense yes it's a new virus yes it's an unknown yes we have to be cautious but on the same but on the flip side Life has always been a risk. Every day I wake up is a day. I mean, I might not, like, there's a chance tonight when I go to sleep, I will not wake up again. There's always, like, we, everything, nothing in this life is guaranteed. Nothing. There is no safety. There is no, there is no, um, there is no safety. There is only familiarity. And the question of whether or not you're willing to step out of your comfort zone to discover more to life. Because there's a lot of magic in this life, but you got to be willing to take a lot of hits to find that magic, right? That right. That's that's it. That is all there is to it. Which is why next year, no matter where we're at, I'm just going to go back to traveling again because I just I will at that point have exhausted just where I'm at in my own life. It's like I I respect people being cautious, but I gotta live, and then and then that's kind of where I'm I, I'm I'm kind of at right, and so. Yeah, no. What? What? You only have now, right? There's, 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 there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well. Yeah, you, I've had my own brush with death a couple times, and one the first time it was very. It changes you when you have when you face your own mortality in the face that you that you know, without certainty that one day you're not going to be here anymore. You change your whole focus. It's no longer about how much money you make. It's no longer about your retirement. It's no longer about any of that crap. It doesn't matter. I have only whatever time I have to make to live the life I'm going to live. So what kind of life do I want to live and what am I willing to do to get it? That's it. And that's life. That That is like no matter how old you are, that's the truth. What am I willing to be, give up to become? What am I willing to grow? What do, what What makes me passionate? What makes me live? Because that's it. I'm here to live. There's only two things you're doing in this life. Living or dying. I'm too old to worry. I'm too old to be afraid. I got I got shit to do. <laughs> and how did you get to that, um, I hate to say it, but that is the old 70s saying, how did you get to that headspace? So many people don't. Right? Because I met death. I literally met death. I, I was so, so I was um, in Arizona. And I had the opportunity to work for one of my heroes. 
it did not work well. We'll just we'll leave it at that. that. That's a long. It was a very hard, brutal lesson for me. And the mistake I made during that time was I didn't want anybody's help. And I was just I was really angry. And but I was killing myself. I would have to just to go to my day job at that time. I was living in another city without a car. I would hitchhike into that town. I would end up walking miles on miles on miles. Then I would go to work. And then in the morning, I'd go back and I'd basically repeat. And I'd get a few hours sleep and do it. I wasn't, I, I was eating, but I was using so much energy just to survive. Just to survive. It was really hard. And after a few months of doing that, there was a moment. And I was, I was at that time, I moved to the city. I had just lost my job. I literally just lost my job. Uh, after I moved into the city, it was like it, this was one of the, like this was my personal trial run of the moment. I looked out into the horizon, and I saw a shadow of something. It was in the distance. It was literally in the distance, but I knew it was coming for me. And then if I was going, and if I was going to stay on the path, I was going to meet it face to face. Now, here's the interesting thing, though, about that moment. When I knew that, I kind of had like my own like you you face that you face that moment in your life you realize that it's not what you think it is when you get to the end. That's the other thing I realized this too. It's not, I don't think it's the end. I think it's a doorway to something else. And there, there was, if I had chosen to go on that path to my end, there would have been no judgment, no consequence in the sense that I'll be damned to eternal hell. This was a decision I had to make. And at, this was me at 25 or 26, 27 years old, just to give you an idea where where I was. And I realized that that like that's when I hit like there was that, and then there is that there is that moment, and then my sister. And this is I consider I still consider this probably the bigger miracle of two possibly. So I got this I got these pictures in the mail. I was I was I was visiting. I went back to the town I was at because my post office box was still there, and I I opened this envelope. And I see these pictures of myself at four or five years old with mom and dad. My parents have been divorced. I hadn't seen these photographs in about 20 years. Like that's how long, right? Something I never thought I'd see again. And it was like, wow, right? Things do come back to you. Like it was actually kind of like one of those um, real moments in my life where it was like, wow. Things I never expected to see again were right there, and yeah, that's that's it. That's the headspace, and that's and from that moment on, I've had that headspace. I don't right. I don't. I don't. I don't take my time for granted. Now I've had to learn some other lessons to level up on this as time has gone on. But if anything, it's built on that. I know that. I'm going to leave this world. I'm going to leave. And when I leave it, nothing nothing in this world is coming with me. I'm going to go somewhere else and do something else. Whatever that is. Right? Yeah, yeah right? Well, that, that's it. So I know this. So now that all said, I don't know if it's going to be heaven or hell when I get there. I have no idea. Like, but, I mean, like, look, I believe what I believe. But when you get right down to it, you don't know until you get there. Honestly. So... But why do I have to play by anybody else's rules in this time if that's the case? Because honest to God, none of, no one here matters in that sense. What matters is, can I look in the mirror? Can I be, be like, I did everything I knew how to do. I succeeded, I failed, I made a shitload of mistakes. I'm good with that. Did I do everything I set out to do? And why? Cause I, the thing I want, truly want, is no regrets or as few regrets as possible because those hurt yeah, yeah. that those hurt yeah. right nothing else does nothing else does I could end up like I have nothing right that literally I am at this moment in time I have literally very little to my name and I'm okay with that it doesn't matter what matters is right what matters is I'm doing the things I love to do. I'm trying to make the most of the gifts I have. I think I'm worth a million bucks and I, or more. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to go get it. Because 
honest to God, and I'm willing to fight for it, and I'll go through anybody. And if you think you got, you think you're gonna stop me, I got news for you. I don't give a shit who you are, right? And that's you either are going to kill me or I'm going to succeed. There's no middle ground. That is just the way it's going to be. So you need that belief in yourself. It's the only yeah. way you're gonna get there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I I lived in London, Ontario, and, and the thing about the thing I, I remember about London, this is the weirdest thing about London, Ontario, is we used to all get together in these little our little groups, or these little comfortable groups we got comfortable with, and and we would stay in those groups. Forever. I've done so much in the last, especially these last 10 years. I've done so much. I go back up and I see these people in the exact same positions they were when I left. And I'm like, holy shit. Why? Like, literally, that's literally in my head. It's like, why did you do this to yourself? Right? You could, and, and you know, I may sound super optimistic. Yeah. Oh, sometimes. So, well, well, I, mean, I think it's a little bit of all three, but like that's that's the thing that blows me away, right? So now I have this also unique perspective that I've moved in so many different. I've lived in so many different situations and places and things. I've let myself be uncomfortable over and over and over again. That it's kind of weird. That honestly, the most uncomfortable thing for me to do next is literally to settle down somewhere. That would be the ultimate of uncom like but again right situation right place right like yeah it it's going to be right or not at all right and and the thing about that is right um right i've, I've come to this point in my life where it's just like like i'm just going to do everything i want to do because especially now now that i've done and seen this right now that i've seen this and i've seen how by and large people have reacted to this I can't be like that. I, I, I just, it's not, right? I don't care which side of the debate you're on. I don't care mask, pro mask. I don't care. It's irrelevant. It's like two parents fighting. It's like, really, it's like, why bother? Like, just, 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 like, you know, li I don't care. What, like, what are you doing today that's actually making you come alive? That's way more interesting to me than, than your politics. That, that's actually the least interesting thing. Right? I think I impressed you. <laughs> I think I've impressed you. No, but what, yeah, that's it. What are you doing? That's, uh, important. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I didn't care about the job. I didn't care about being fired. And I had zero, I, I couldn't be intimidated by anybody. And it, it, it was a very, and I was very, still very positive, very happy, but I didn't care. And it rankled everybody that was there because they were used to things being a certain way. And I completely just like, I'm doing my thing. And they did not know what to do with me because there was nothing, I didn't do anything wrong. Right? It was just like, they tried to play their some of their little games and I just waved at them. It's like, hi. Uh, it's like, <laughs> right? So when I gave my notice, a couple of them went to me, you, you're giving up a good job. It's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, giving up, I'm giving up something I don't care about. It's not a good job, right? It's really not. So um, I, I, I you make, we all make choices in our life that, yeah, like I might pay for this. But on the same token, I might get so much more from this. And I think, you know, honestly, I couldn't have done this 10 years ago. But I could. I can definitely do it now. And even... Yeah, yeah, it, it will, it's the headspace. Yeah, I, 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 oh, no, I, I, I still, I've always written, I've done, I've done, like, okay, so during the 10 years I was there, I accidentally wrote and got published by a traditional publisher by accident. That was funny, right? That was funny. Um, I did three books with them. It was good. I started my podcast, won the Aurora for my podcast. So I mean I I was doing these things on my own, but at some point at some point you gotta be like, you know it'd be great if I didn't have to go to work to do this shit. You know, <laughs> you know it would be great. So, um, that's kind of like that, and so there like that slowly built in the back of my head. But after what I went through in Arizona, I had to be, I had to do this one differently, right? I I, I had to be in the headspace of. No matter ups, no matter no matter what ups I go through, no matter what downs I go through, no matter this, no matter that, just keep going. No matter what ups, no down, you keep going, and you just repeat that over and over and over and over and over again, right? Until something gives or something doesn't. And like I said, by I the de my actual deadline date is March seventeenth, twenty twenty one. That's my deadline date. I look at schools, start looking at schools in January. Because I know that's generally when you apply. But I don't make the full plunge into that until March 17th, 2021. What, would you, what courses are you looking at? Broadcasting or psychology. Right. Broadcasting or psychology. Because... How about that? What? How about broadcasting that? Maybe both. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't like I haven't thought that far ahead yet. Like I like that's January. Like January is when I start looking at at it. I could go to. I almost would go back to London, Ontario. That would be that would be hysterical in one sense if I went back. They have Western. They have Western and Fanshawe College. So they. I mean they. Western Western Oh, Western has psychology for sure. I know Fanshawe does have broadcasting there. I know they do. I know Fanshawe does. So that would that would that would suit me in some. In one way, that would go like completely full circle for me, and it would be that like there would be a certain part of me that would that would I would be bored with the city, I would be very bored with the city. That's the only problem with that. The only actual problem with London is is, is it's boring. Like that that's the that's the I might get myself into trouble I wouldn't otherwise get into. Some of that might be fun. Some of that probably would just be more trouble than it's worth. But I mean that's uh right. So there's that. Um, but basically. Here's how I look at this. I've been doing podcasting for five years. I've won awards for it. I've gotten sponsors on my own. I built a brand. I know what the hell I'm doing. If that means I have to get... So if that piece of paper gives me access to CBC, ABC, NBC, Fox, HBO, I'll go do that because I'm good enough to do that. Right? I That's my own belief. That's my own opinion. Right? Ryerson, if they put up with me, I don't know my good. <laughs> if they put up with me, sure. You know, I, I, I would, I would. I'm definitely like it would be a very different thing. It would be I, I'm, headspace wise, I could do it. Like, it, like I would be very, very locked in, 
Whereas I wasn't the first time I went to went to college. I would like I would be very locked in. I would be very let's just get this over with, right? Let's just get this over. I'll tell you, like, one of the things I did do is I did apply for to be a CBC host in Whitehorse, because why the hell not? Do I not? I, 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 I think I could do it. Like, even right now, I think I could absolutely do it, and I'd crush it, and I know it, right? I'll check it out. But like I said, it's just one of those. I like again at this point in my life, I'm not seeking permission. I you got to believe in yourself, right? And, right. So I'm just gonna do it. And like I said, if I have to jump through some hoops, fine. But I'm at this point in my life, it's just like I'm gonna see what I can do on my own. Then I'm gonna see what I can do when I go. Like, and I like going like I like for me like that's. That's where I am in my life. I don't know if that's right, wrong, different. I mean, but that's where I am, you know. And and you know, you you just realize in your life that I can be more. And if I can be more, I should go foresee what more I can be. And if no one's going to give me the chance, I'll create that opportunity for myself. Well, let me tell you. About, I have a friend called uh, Wabish George Hamilton. He's a First Nations guy from Ottawa, Canada. He's got which is I mean that's just it right like that's that's the world we live in today is you have to create your own future right that's it that's just it well we should talk a little bit more about some of your past I mean you, you, it sounds like it sounds like in your case like you've had more fun these last few years than you've ever had before is that accurate that in your case so yeah you're, you're, you're gonna advertise make yourself like an advertiser patty shales marketing guru helping us writers trying to figure out how to tell the right stories for our book is that is that is that, is that something you're considering down the road or what, what do you want to do Okay, so no, no, I get that. I could understand that. It's it's one of those like teaching. The best parts, best part, like great teachers care, 
that's the best thing about good teachers. They, they, they really, really care. The, the bad thing about it is I think the system today, especially is designed to beat the care out of you guys because it's, it, you don't get, especially now I don't, I feel like by and large, the curriculums don't reward people for putting all that work in. I, I, I feel that if there's anything I've learned about in this year, there's two things I really learned about this year and that's this, um, we undervalue ourselves big time. Like we just, we just do. Um, I think, I think we look, I mean, looking at, I, I think the biggest thing, we, we shouldn't be arguing over mask or no mask. We should be arguing about wage scales for everything. Because I think, I think the, um, I think the truth of the matter is, you know, I think a teacher should be making at least another five, 10 bucks an hour. I think the guy packing groceries should be, you know, making a living wage doing it. If it's this important, if it's this much of a, especially right now, considering the strain so many people are under right now, right? It seems to me that honestly, the smart thing to do is just be like, what we should be honestly doing right now is like, hey, listen, we deserve more. Let's get it. And if you're not willing to give it, let's just shut everything down. Because honestly, they, they, Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people realize how important teachers are. Oh, yeah, I know. No, they, 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 well, that's amazing. I think that's fabulous. And I hope they don't forget now that they're back in school because there's, you know, it's dangerous for a lot of people. Well, yeah. Um, a lot of kids. Yeah. I, I, but they're doing it. They're out there on the front lines all the time, like other people on the front yeah, lines. Yeah. Again, I, I think, I think, um, this is what I think. I still remember my high school teachers that were there for me. Like the impact a teacher can make with, with their, um, their students is tremendous. Um, I think that never changes, um, because with a teacher, again, going back to something we talked about earlier, your biggest job isn't even to teach the subjects you're teaching, it's to give students the confidence and permission to pursue whatever it is they want to pursue. That's your real job. And you have to, that means though, for you guys to do the job as well as you possibly can, you have to invest in your students. So after about 20, 30, how many years did you teach? 37. 37 years of teaching. Well, I am still friends with some of the kids who were in my grade two class in Toronto. Exactly. Because well, it'd be Well, no, they, they know you care. Like, they, like so I'll, I'll tell you the last, last thing I did with, um, I did with my teacher. Uh, well, actually, I did with all my teachers. I made a promise to myself that when and if I started writing, I would, like, I got published on a regular basis. I would find all the teachers that inspired me from my, my grade in elementary and in and, and high school that I could find, and I'd give them a copy of my book. I actually did, except for the one I really wanted to. Except for the one I actually really, really, really want. I couldn't. His last name is Sharp. S-H-A-R-P-E. And Sharp M in a phone book is very, 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 very difficult to go through. It's just ridiculously hard. Sharp M. Two thousand. Oh, God. <laughs> right? That's, right? That's, that's the problem. But besides that, I've been able to, like, it's, yeah. The teachers that were in my life that did great things for me, I remembered. Right? You you never forget that stuff. Ever. Yeah, so it sounds like you've made a hell of an impact on quite a lot of people. So, yeah. You made a big impact on me. They taught me a lot, that's for sure. Did you learn more or did they learn more? Mm, I don't know. You don't know? So, let's see here. I think, I think, what do you think? Do, you, do we think we have an interview here? Is there anything you'd like to talk about that we haven't talked about yet? Or It's up to you. Still planning when things are safe to go back to the mall and do another high altitude track. 
my favorite story uh, well my favorite story from people in your age group are two of them Colonel Sanders and yeah. Christopher and <laughs> no it's, because he, he tried his whole life to succeed at something right and he got to his retirement and he was like screw it right I'm not going to retire with just this so he bought some chicken and who knew he cooked some chicken and next thing you know he's he, like by the time he got to your age he was a billionaire I mean it was just one of those crazy crazy life stories but my other one's Christopher Lee. He was 90 years old, and he cut his first rock star, rock song, at 90. Really? Yeah. That's, that's great. Do you know the guy who played Saruman, Saruman in Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Or Count Count Doku in, in Star Wars is the other one, right? Is the other that right? He cut his first rock out rock song at 90. Perfect. Yeah. So. Why not? Why not? You know. Well, again, it's. As we talked about earlier, at some point, like I, I look at the fact of how little fucks I give now. I'm, I'm scared what I'm going to be like around fifty because I, 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 I think I think because um, anything as as you get old as you get older, I, I think I think the hardest thing you have to I have to keep with you to some degree is patience because you don't because you realize your time you you realize your I, I see it with my dad. My dad is a uh, my dad is in his sixties. And he's he's some degree some degree, and I can see it with him. His patience is shot. Like he if he doesn't get his point, if he tries to get his point across. If it doesn't happen right away, or he'll try one more time, and if it doesn't happen, then he just loses it because he just he does like the patience he had as a younger man isn't there anymore, right? Because because I think I have more patience now. Really? So what you see? But I work on it. Yeah. People understand you. People, people that will fight with you sometimes, but they will at least stand. Sure. Yeah, because yeah. you, you, you need. We all need to listen. My shit will always stink. That's just the way. I, and I need some. And every once in a while, you need someone to remind you of that, right? So, um, but that's the thing. Like I look at where I'm at in fifty. Like I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna care. I'm gonna care even less then than I do now, which is scary because I don't care that much now. And uh, <laughs> you right. Know, and um, and uh, the thing about that is, um, that's the one thing I'm keeping in mind is, I know my patience is going to go, and some of it, it's a good thing too. I, I do think I do think when we're younger, we swallow a lot more stuff than when we, than we should. I think when you're older, you recognize like, well, well, I to be yeah, there. yeah. Oh yeah, I I find it, I find as you gets older, you, as as you get older, it actually gets easier to do it. It, 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 it's like, eh, if you don't like it, right? It's like, but um, but this, but the thing about that is, well, no, it, it goes both ways. Like, there, there, that's the good side of letting your patience kind of like erode a little bit. But the bad side is, as you say, you have to make sure that that it's good to have that in you. It's like, you know what? He didn't get it. That's okay. I'll go fishing. Right, right. It's not for you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. But if, if, if you if you if you if you're if you're like yeah yeah you'll, you'll see me I'll be like wow you really care less like yeah yeah I do but, but Miss, Miss Patty I think it's pretty awesome that you that you're going for what you're going for um, I hope you keep going I hope you keep doing the things that you love to do keep making the impact 
you're making. And uh, everybody says stay safe. I actually, I actually say tell people to stay dangerous. And what I mean by that is the most dangerous kind of person in the world is someone that thinks for themselves, fears from their own convictions, that is willing to, that's willing to adapt, be mobile, be mercurial. Someone that understands those, has those things in nature and can actually discipline themselves to do it is a truly dangerous person. And I would rather be dangerous than be safe. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Like not, not fearing success. Yes. Because you will succeed. I think you will. And you're going to be like, and I'll be like, I'll be coming to you in about two years. Please show me how you marketed your stuff because that's awesome. Okay. Sounds good? Okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. You give me a class, and then you'll be like, okay, write this down. Do not over... Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. No, anyways, I think we have an interview, so why don't we talk about what, what's out for you right now, like what books are out for you right now, what's coming up, and how people can reach you. help you tell your story the way you want it told. If you're in the genres of science fiction, fantasy, thriller, historical, or young adult, I have services that can definitely help you. I can produce, narrate, and master said audiobook so it's ready for Amazon and any other software you need. For more information, see my website at jpentelaresco.wordpress.com slash audiobook services. You worked hard to create that story, and I'll work just as hard to make sure it's told in the right way. And that was my conversation with Patty Shells, ladies and gentlemen. Patty, you are an incredible guest, and like I said, we can do another conversation sometime, I know, because you're awesome, and I really, really enjoyed um, I really enjoyed this interaction and this chance to uh, get to know you on my show. So, next time, though, we might be doing it a little different, and I'm hoping to do this a little different. Um... One of my biggest dreams when I started the podcast was that I would, I, I'm a big admirer of a bunch of different shows. Joe Rogan, um, Tom Schneider, Larry King, and before the scandal, John Gomeshi. And they would do these intimate conversations, they do these intimate conversations with different people about anything and everything. Uh, Joe's the man. In three hours, doing it for two to three hours at a time, that's an impressive amount of conversation. Um... I like the idea of a one hour, hour and a half show um, in which I'm just talking, getting to know someone a little bit and people get this conversation. I have, there's no, I have the ego to acknowledge. I don't really think there's anybody that does interviews better than me. I truly believe that. 
uh, if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't do it as much as I have. I've been doing interviews for 20 years. I know how to do an interview with just about anybody. So let's see what happens if people believe in it enough to go for it. So my Patreon page is going to be going through a secondary change. And my first post will be about it too. Um, my heroes in terms of this and why I wanted to do this. I've always loved hearing people's stories. It's just people that are doing incredible things. It's always amazing to me to listen to them and hear their struggle. Um, that's always impressive to me. And uh, that doesn't mean I'm not going to do books, I'm not going to do audio, although the audio will take a slight step back. I feel like, for me at least, maybe until I do some more narration jobs, it feels like, um, for whatever reason, um, it's not going the way I hope. But at the same token, I'm definitely going to be doing more audio projects, at least with my books as well. And then people like what they hear, I hope they definitely give me a shout and a shout. A shout and a shot. Yeah, I'm going to keep the Sarah in here. Screw it. But, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm going. That's the direction I'm going to go. Um, like I said, it doesn't really matter. Every dream I have, I'm going to go for in this time. I have a deadline, a personal one, and I'm going to try to make them all happen because that's the responsible thing. Um, do I see myself going back to school next year? In some capacity, yes. I don't know if it's going to be a full-time gig. I don't. I don't know if I fit as a full-time student, but, um, I, yeah, I enjoy learning. And that's one of the other reasons why I do what I do. But anyways, guys, thanks for listening to this episode of Josh. If you want to support the podcast, you can do so a number of different ways. Support my Patreon, first and foremost. Uh, I have a Patreon account, you know, patreon.com slash justjoshingpodcast. Um, I'm going to be upgrading it now into going towards a TV show, Twitch show, and I'm really excited about what I'm doing there. Um, I hope you guys join me on that journey. Subscribing to my podcast, of course, is, a, is the other most obvious way to do it. I'm on a variety of platforms. iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer. Come say hello. Say hi. See what's up. There's that. Um, my books, The Cloud Diver, The uh, Alice Zero. Both of those are available now on Amazon.com. Beyond that... Uh, check out some other things coming up in the next couple weeks. Um, outside of that, my merchandise is available. I have a newsletter you can subscribe to. And I'm going to go to bi weekly with the newsletter. Every two weeks, I'll have a new post about something. Outside of that, thanks for listening, guys. Stay inspired. Keep surfing the chaos and keep going forward. All right? Take care of yourselves.